Well, good morning guys. We're here for a soggy day four of nine days in the north. As you know, I've been doing my trap course. So we're just here at Ryan Tamlin's uh, property here and we're gonna be doing the second portion of the practical course. So this is all gonna be hands-on trap setting. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much. We got a little bit of work to do inside the garage before we move out and do our own set. Show you my set, probably gonna do a leg hold trap for a coyote or something like that. And then uh, we're gonna watch the other guy set up bunch of other different things too and then right now we have a beaver to finish up that we didn't get done yesterday so we're going to get that pulled out and then we're going to uh, dye some of the traps so the trap to dye them um, is to take a little bit of the the color out of it uh, from the machine process and the oils obviously an animal is going to be able to smell that so we use what's called the speed dye and uh, gasoline and mix it all together and gasoline just so that it helps uh, dry a lot faster and then we'll hang those up and then those will be ready to use because out of the machine uh, You can use them. They just won't be super effective and then after that we're going to go a little bit over the uh, lures the scent lures It's about it once we get that beaver done then we can jump back outside and get busy with some actual sets We're gonna do some water sets and some land based sets and then we're gonna go over uh, our sets and get kind of graded on them and get some tips and pointers on what we can improve upon. Show you how to mix the dye, what I do with it in sort of a small batch form. I want to knock any of the loose stuff off. Same with this one. You can see there's a little bit of scale there. The only reason you want to knock this off is the dye, it'll stick to that, but if it's loose, what's going to happen? Exactly. So I'm going to stick a little bit of gas in. So there's black, there's brown, um, white, green. I usually always use black or brown. Yeah, and these ones were done last year. Uh, they're not very rusty, but because I did put a few new uh, parts on them, I figured I'd do them anyways. Like, and because they were rusted, it just absorbs it, right? So again, it'd be better if it was nice and sunny out. But lower lip, nose is on there. Um, and the paws, right? Like you can, yeah, so yeah, see how so I did split the paws? Around the, around the pad. Yep. Or if you can open them up and just work them all the way in. And this one here I could, you can see how hard it turned it. Like yeah, it, it's like a rock. Yep. That's a very good quality timber wolf. We don't, we've got the Eastern timber wolves here. Um, like this one here is about, uh, I think it's, it was 80 or 90 pounds when I got it. The biggest one I've got around here is 108. Um, that's a big wolf. Yeah, it's a killing machine. So we got a couple of catches, uh, Ryan's catches. We got a timber wolf, um, a couple of, uh, what are these, weasels? Weasels. I haven't seen too many weasels. They're mostly the nocturnal. I don't see that many on the trail camera down south. And this was a, remind me, uh, pine martin, uh, special color. What do you call it? Canary. So the other guys are finished up. They throw, they just threw their beaver up. And that's uh, the one Ryan did yesterday as a demo. And then uh, I think that's, well, we got to find the one with the hole in it. That's our raccoon, but they look pretty similar. Both the same. We did a pretty good job. We were pretty fast. Yeah, I think ours is this one with the short tail on it. Yeah. And it looks about the same, right? About as clean as the other one. Yeah. And then our muskrats over here, they're drying up nicely. It'd be nice to see the final product, but that's what it is. So Ryan's got a pretty sweet setup here for skinning. I like this table. Yeah. It's just table here it's uh, he can throw a board in these are all the beaver boards so they all get pinned out on here and then they're different sizes so they've got different size ovals depending on the size of the beaver that you get that's pretty neat and uh, the only other kit really uh, flushing board that's just a two by eight and then you need a bunch of different sizes uh, for your cased skin animals from uh, Red squirrel right up to raccoon, coyote, 
I guess it would be the largest you would do that or a, maybe a, a wolf. Uh, and there's different techniques, different things you have to kind of keep, keep in mind when you skin the different types of animals as far as like keeping the lower jaw, keeping the legs or the paws, like for the coyote. Not the lower jaw, but the lower lip. The lower lip, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Got to be specific yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> We're talking furs here. And what I thought was kind of cool is everything that he keeps basically goes back in the bush. Yeah. Or he doesn't keep, I should say. The, the fur is kept and the rest of it goes back out for baits or uh, for sets. Um, well, for baits, right? Yeah. Uh, from anything from, well, if you're doing something simple like a bear bait, but if you're trying to trap uh, pine marten or mink or whatever, you could chop up different raccoon animals, or raccoon, or yeah. muskrat. Yeah, so nothing gets wasted. So actually it's kind of a, well, it is a renew renewable resource. That's the main takeaway from this whole thing. And you're not taking anything away from the bush except for the fur, which would normally would go to waste because no animal actually wants the fur. So by taking just the fur out and putting everything back in, you're just cycling life as it was intended to do while keeping an eye on and tracking and monitoring the population. Yeah. So he just showed off a drowning set where it's hooked up on a tree and then the, the uh, catch would be a foot, foothold catch and then the animal would have to, would swim down to find deeper water and then get stuck down in the deeper water and drown. So you might, you know, wonder whether that's ethical or not, but they've done tests and, um, you know, these animals are aquatic animals are used to holding their breath. So they're going to basically expire. What was the definition, the textbook definition of that one? So well, apparently they can't get water in their lungs. So they um, succumb to carbon dioxide build up in their bloodstream not to actually technical drowning right which is interesting i didn't know that about yeah it. versus a terrestrial anim animal that would yeah, technically would drown just like yeah yeah we would fight too much water and, yeah and these animals yeah. are designed to hold their breath for long periods of time and there's a book that we have to follow which is super extensive by trap to mm -hmm. make sure that they have enough uh power to kill the animal but not too much that it damages the hide by trying I'll put it just back like that. Then when he walks into it, bang, and he'll swim in the deeper water. Oh, I can't get back up because of the lock, right? So when some of these traps come with a lock, uh, slide lock already on them, and some of them do not, that's why I've got this one on here just with a J hook. So, or, sorry, the S hook, but that's the basic. So do you guys remember weight wise what do we need for a beaver? Thirty. Uh, six, how many how many feet of water? Kilograms. Four. Yeah. Okay. So notice the way that this lock is put on there. If he swims out, he can keep going. If he pulls up, he's not. So we'll go back up here. I'm gonna prep, um, prep a bit of a bed here. And this is, so this could be, you could do a lure set here. Put a stick up here with some lure on it. He swims up. When they swim up, they usually put their, you know, one paw in there and then they get caught, out they go. So, when I make my bed, I wanna have it big enough that the trap will sit level. You don't want the trap sitting on an angle. You want to try and keep it level so when he pushes on it, it's firm. You're going to want to fit it, make sure it feels decent and firm. And if this was at a spot where it was a, um, a dam where the water was going through, you're having a problem catching the beaver. Um, he keeps either setting off at 330. This is a perfect set. So you've got where that water funnels through. You can stick either, if it's a big spot, one trap here, one trap here, and then you can stick lure there, you can leave it open. If you wanna have your um, dog on the backside, I like to fold my arms back a little bit. Again, it's under the water. So that's pretty much it for a, um, for the set there. You can put a little bit of lure up here, either or as he comes in, and he steps up on that pan, then he's gonna drag it out and he can't pull it back up. So because mink do travel 
along the bank. Anywhere that there's a hole or a cutout, they will go in to investigate. So we're gonna set it. Again, don't forget your safety. Give it a bit of a shake. Make sure it's not gonna trip. Um, in the video, they were showing you guys to take these off first. And then this one, my preference is take this guy off. See, if I had taken the safeties off first, it would have set off. Typically what I'll do is I'll set it with uh, with lure. Is this what, do you put the ferns and the sticks over top of it? So just like that, it looks like a natural set. So as the mink comes along here and he's searching for, you know, it could be grubs, uh, worms, fish, uh, shellfish, he's gonna smell the lure in there, straight in he goes. So again, you want a fairly decent stick that you can anchor to. Typically what you're looking for is where the beaver's been coming up and down. Um, if you're gonna set a blind set, you can see where they're crossing. So that's where you can use, uh, you can use those stabilizers. Or you can put it into the dirt, use stabilizer sticks, whatever you want. Typically I'll use sticks, but I want you guys to see both sides of it. Um, if, so I put my lure right on there. So what I would do here, um, if I didn't have the stabilizer, I'd have sticks down through the springs here to stabilize it. We're also gonna stick these sticks here. This is sort of, um, it'll act as a fence so that it encourages the beaver to go up right at the set. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing this guys. I would just throw it on the ground. I could do this as sort of a scent post or a dirt hole set here. Um, if you ever notice a fox, a coyote, a wolf, if they're walking out through a um, through a field, if there's anything from an old stump there to you know a tree that's blown down, they always come up to it, and usually they're going to urinate on that spot. So so that's that's one thing that'll draw a fox or a coyote in is as they come up. They're gonna walk past it, you're gonna urinate on it. It's a, it's a natural attractant. You wanna create your bed, you don't wanna do it too big, and you don't wanna dig too deep that it's gonna, you know, you don't have a nice firm uh, bed to put it on. So, again, your trap size, like I'm gonna use a uh, this coil spring for coyote. Um, again, you know what's gonna be about this big. So I'm gonna make a nice level spot. Because you want this to sit uh, fairly firm in there. You can either use the stake system or a disposable stake. Like I said, this one here, it's got the spring on it, but this one's used for the uh, the legs. There. The disposable stake that you're gonna have, or the earth anchor, it's just gonna have a swivel at this end. So again, you can just more or less picture what I have here without the springs uh, set up in there. So I'm gonna drive it in. So I'm not gonna put it too much farther, um, but basically, if this spring setup wasn't there, you'd drive it into where the, the swivel is. So I'll pull it out. And you always want to give it, remember when that goes in, it's driving in. So you want to, uh, you want to basically pull it and straighten it out. So there's a J hook on this and we hook it up to this. We're going to seat, seat it back in here. Like I was mentioning before, you want to try and keep everything as clean as possible. Um, you don't want to be running back and forth, whether it be your ATV your truck, anything like that. You wanna try and, you go in, you do the set, you get out. So that one there, um, as I mentioned the other day, it still is a, out of adjustment a little bit, but uh, it could go down a little bit more. And you wanna make sure that when you do bed it, like I said before, this would be attached to the um, the anchor. When you do it before, you you wanna make sure that everything's, like the trap's firm in there, so that when the animal comes in and steps on it, that trap, isn't going to shift. See how it's coming up there? So what I'm going to do, again, get a little bit more, pack it in, but you don't want to pack in the dirt around the pan area. You leave that open. So whether you use sheep's wool or um, synthetic fibers, you know, the pillow packing, you can put that in underneath it so that it leaves that open hollow void. Cotton balls. 
yeah, cotton mm -hmm. balls, but that synthetic yeah. um, fiber or the, you know, pillow stuffing, it's perfect for that. So you can stuff it in there. They also make um, pan covers as well. So the pan, yeah, it's just, it goes over top of the whole pan. So it eliminates anything from going in there. But when the animal steps on it, it's right, it's right there. Again, you don't want to uh, put it to a point where if it gets cold out that area that the pan and the dog is, it's not going to freeze. So you don't want to, you don't want that to happen. And then this stuff here, uh, it's peat moss. So the peat moss, you know, resists the freezing. Um, and some of this is actually waxed. So you can use wax sand. And what wax sand is, is it's been put, um, like it's, we, us as trappers make it. You put it in a cement mixer, you heat it up with paraffin and wax. So you get your sand in there, heat the sand up, add the wax, and it basically turns into an antifreeze, right? We'll just use these leaves as this, uh, synthetic fibers underneath. Will that work? No, this, no, <laughs> but we'll work. just, we'll pretend. We're pretending, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so whenever, who, whoever has this set, they can do that. But I'm gonna just do a quick check of the set. Okay, we're good. I wanna check, make sure, you know, feels pretty s stable there. Pack it a little bit more. Again, we're gonna check either jaw. Yep, feels pretty good. I may pack a little more in there. Again, you just, you want it as stable as possible. And then what I'm gonna take, put a little bit of this over. Again, typically what you do for a set like this, if you had a screener, um, again, there's a, it's a mesh that you dump this onto and it just screens out any of the big stuff. So if there's chunks in there, like you just want all the fine material there. So that's gonna be over top of it. 60 degrees to the back of that, you know, your backdrop there. Put your lure in there or bait or whatever. If you wanna have it 16 inches behind your trap, so he's gonna come up, you know, his nose is gonna be down and right in. So it's simple, like he's always with the front paw there. All righty, so we're off to the races. I gotta do two sets. I gotta do a raccoon cubby set right here with the white bucket. It's like a live trap, but not a live trap. And I'm gonna reset the coyote trap. So let's do the coyote trap first. And then Ryan's gonna come over and grade us. I can't uh, leave the coyote set when I'm finished it because there's a dog running around and uh, not the kind of dog that we actually wanna catch. So let's get that thing done and we'll see if we pass. Basically, it's just a white pail that you can get for free at uh, most convenience stores. Not Well, the safeties are all on. Uh, normally, you would remove this over here, this, and also the set safety. But we got some pets and kids around here, so we're not going to do that. And we'd obviously bait that at the back with something sweet, savory, and stinky. Uh, we could use sardines, uh, marshmallows. Those are always a good mainstay. Salmon, any kind of fish, you know. And uh, the most important thing about the whole traps business is you want to anchor off your snare or uh, trap for the biggest animal you will you can possibly catch. And in this case, it could potentially be a fox or coyote or wolf. And you don't want them to drag your set away. And then the only other thing I did was kind of flattened out this area. So there's a nice landing spot here around both sides. And if a coyote or if a raccoon comes up on this side here, they're gonna to tend to wanna to stick their head in there and figure out what's going on. And then they might come up from where Jeremy's coming down the hill into the pond area. <laughs> it's not my marshmallows, I ran out. We're doing some fake sets here. Is there some in the back of there? Yeah. Yeah, stick your hand in there and find out. No, it's safe. Yeah, it's all safety. Yeah, it's all safety, 100% safety. So that's it. Cool. I think we're good. Well, I think. You think I'm Because I'm just learning. I think you're good. Yeah. But because I think maybe that's a 160. Oh. Um, Paul's got a measuring tape, so you could measure it and then you would know. Yeah, I don't think. But I, a 160 is okay. You think a 160 is fine for a raccoon? Yeah. So I'm not going to fail. It's certified, as long as it's also the right brand of 160. Uh, that's true. I didn't really. You can't really check on those. You're kind of old to They're check. They're kind of hard. 
you can't really see the labels on there obviously if i buy my own stuff i'm gonna know and you'll know but part of the test here is that you're just giving a bunch of random stuff like you got it at a flea market and well and he did <laughs> yeah he did say that there's some stuff in here that wouldn't be certified right yeah so you got to double check well we'll see we'll find out i'm just gonna double check see if there's anything that i could have used instead of that one it's kind of like the cheat note well it's not this one because that's for uh what did he say mink Nice grab. Or, uh, sorry, Martin. Me. So we're good. I think we're good. We had some second thoughts about the size of the trap for the raccoon. No worries. That's why we do this. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to double check if yes. there was another option, possibly, yeah. that I didn't look at. Yeah. <laughs> but we're good. Cool. Right on. So I think we're set. A couple of guys still working away at theirs, and yeah. we'll do a walkthrough. So that, that beaver set looks really good. That's a 330. So that's the biggest I think you can get. I don't think they make anything bigger than the 330. And the 330 covers a lot of animals. It's a little bit for a little bit big for some animals, but the 330 is pretty good. What did you do? A drown set for uh, mink? No, for muskrat. Muskrat, right. I guess you could do one for mink as well, right? So he's got a little, what do you call that a pan trap? It's a foothole one and a half inch. Is that what it is? Yeah, they're one and a half. And uh, he's just going to put it down there in the swamp. You pick, you pick the most awkwardest spot to do it, but it looks like it's going to work. And well, then so I'm pretending that there's a muskrat house here, and that would be his landing pad. Gotcha. Right, so the trap's underwater, and then I've got a slide pole. Yeah, you're calling that a four-foot drown set, or does it have to be? I don't think it has to be for the muskrat. That's for beavers. Oh, for muskrats, fine. Yeah. Yeah, just for beavers, it has to be a four-foot plus yeah. a three, uh, Oh, wait. This is actually surprisingly deep here. Is it? Yeah, like you wouldn't want to step out here because... <laughs> oh, it is deep Then there. you're like... Gotcha. I didn't find bottom there. I don't even know where it is. Yeah. Mm, here? Yeah. So I could tell, like, when you hit that one jaw, you could tell the, <laughs> the, the trap pivot? actually moved a little bit. A little bit. So what I would recommend is, um, when you put that trap in there, make sure that bed is firm. Okay. So pound the dirt around it, even if you got to use your fi uh, like your fist and just pound it down, or you know a hammer, or like a small sledge, whatever. You don't want a trap bed that's loose. You want it firm in there. So when the animal steps, if he goes in and he steps on the jaw, he's not going to step on it. And it's like you stepping on a board that's loose. If you know you're going to fall or something's going to happen, you're going to back your foot off. So if it's firm, he steps on it. You know he might not hit that pan right away, but he's going to hit that pan. You know when he does and he's not gonna you know be unsure and take off so but no that's good alrighty so that's a pass on both sets uh, I just got to get a stick here because we're gonna set this one off I didn't film that it was a little awkward to film but uh, yeah the bucket set works and we get to trigger the trap and see what happens ready oh that's so violent that thing's freaking dead all right well, there we go We'll put it right here. It's all safe. And then we're going to go check the other ones. So it has to be 8 to 10 inches in diameter and then 8 to 10 inches off the ground. So it's approximately that. Right. So you want to try and clear it out. Try and have a little bit of an open area. Okay. Uh, you know, with your 12 to 18 inches of water where they're going to drown. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, I was surprised because I wanted to step out there, but it's, uh, yeah. it's pretty deep it there. Off out there in a hurry. Right. As far as I could without getting the trap into the mud too. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So again, you just want to make sure that it's good. Having it secured here, he takes off. Now it's gonna destroy the tubby. And we've got lure in the back, marshmallows, peanut butter, all that good yep. stuff. And I'm anchored back into here. I pounded this in with a rock. Okay. Um, kind of in hindsight though. So just like that. And the weasel falls in the eat a hole. And then what happens? Snap. <laughs> yeah, so that's, it's quick and easy. Like I'll put a little bit of bait in the back there. Um, even up on the tree, I've got some weasel lure. You just put a little bit there. And you know, if any weasel are coming around, they're usually up and in there. Oh, school's out for summer. No, tell, uh, got two days off right now. We're going to go check our pigeon trap and see if it's producing. I want to check the trail camera right now and see if I can improve it. We've got a little piece of plywood where we can put it up in the rafter space 
where I think it might be more inviting for the pigeons. They, they won't land, well, they might not land so much on the ground as up high. So that'll be the trick. Uh, where it is, everybody passed and we're gonna get graded on it. So if you stick around, I'll let you know what I got. He hasn't finalized that. So I think he's got it all upside in his head there and he's gonna go fill the forms out. But uh, by the end, we'll know. And we still have a written portion too, which will be in, uh, I guess, four days from now. Tomorrow we're gonna take a, well, we might go duck hunting tomorrow, duck goose. And then after that, we're gonna make a trip way up north for some grouse. Well, we haven't decided yet, but probably something like that and do some actual off-gridding and camping. So I'll meet you guys over at the pigeon traps. Oh, welcome to the farm. Well, let's go check out the camera and the trap and see what's going on here. I'm gonna watch for the pigeon. drop holes. What's it doing down here? Why isn't it in the trap? Pigeon right there. You guys see that? missed <laughs> well it was down there in the feed wasn't it yeah oh and they ate everything around the whole thing but it didn't go in why not outside. well they're getting low on the outside food but there's still maybe there's too much food on the outside I'll check the camera here and we'll know exactly what's going on because if they're not near the trap then we're gonna move the trap but if they are near the trap we just maybe need to give it a little bit more time so let's fire this up. It's always interesting to see, because while you're not here, you know what's happening. Playback. <laughs> oh, 186 impressions? Uh, that's a lot. Okay, well, let's skip, skip. They're all around the thing. Birds, 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 birds. It looks like there's some inside the trap, but I don't know, maybe they're just on the outside. Birds, birds, not big birds, small birds. Huh, I hear the pigeons up top there. Birds all over the place. Oh, there's a pigeon. He's, he looks like he's in the trap though, but he doesn't look like he's in the trap at the same time. Oh, he's on the outside of the trap, but they're all small birds. Birds, still. I don't see any pigeons work in this this area. It's just all the other birds. Well, hmm, now that's a little bit of dilemma there because I don't think the pigeons are actually coming down on the bottom here. Well, it looks like we've got lots of activity here. It's mostly those house sparrows and they've kind of cleaned up the mess here. So what we're gonna do is gonna clean everything up around here because now they know there's a source of food in here. The birds, the small birds can actually come in and out of the trap. Um, so the hope is like once it gets down to uh, just pigeons left or, or just the stuff on the inside, then pigeons actually go in, who knows? I don't know if the pigeons are as desperate as the other birds because there's a lot more activity from the sparrows than there are. So let's get all the corn put inside the trap and we'll check it back in a couple more days. 